In this video, we're going to be talking about percent yield. Let me begin by asking you a question. Do chemical reactions always turn out as expected? Uh, so does everything always turn out the way you expected? Did 2020 turn out the way you expected? Uh, no. Um, so the answer is most of the time no <laughs> okay so usually chemical reactions don't turn out the way we expect them so let's go through an example and then we'll talk about why percent yield is important all right so here is a chemical reaction i've got a starting amount of both and we want to calculate the theoretical yield so this is already something we know how to do so let's begin by Let's do the beryllium first. So we have 1.00 grams of beryllium. And let's see, beryllium has a molar mass of 9.01. So that's for every one mole. And our ratio of beryllium to our product is one to one. All right, and then our product's molar mass is 79.91. All right, so of course my grams of beryllium will cancel, my moles of beryllium will cancel, and my moles of products will cancel. So I get an answer of 8.87. I've already taken care of sig figs here. So let's do the same thing with our HCl. So I have 7.50 grams. And HCl's molar mass is 36.46. All right, HCl has a different ratio here. There are two moles of HCl for every one mole of product. And to convert our product back into grams, we're going to be using the same molar mass here, 79.91. All right, so grams will cancel here, moles will cancel here, moles will cancel here. And when you calculate this, you get 8.8, oops, sorry, 8.22 grams. So our theoretical yield will be our smaller number, 8.87. And our larger number, this uh, 8.87, this will be in excess. So our limiting reactant is HCl. So the question didn't ask us this, but it's always good to identify your limiting and excess reactants. Okay, so we've done this before. We know that we're gonna yield 8.22 grams of our product with the given amounts that we have. So that's what we're expecting. So now we're gonna calculate the actual yield. So we perform this lab and our product is in a flask. And what we're going to do is we are going to isolate the mass of just the product. So what we're going to do is we are going to subtract the mask of the flask and the product from the mass of the empty flask. So it's going to be 116.78 grams minus 109.43 grams. And I get an answer of 7.35 grams. So that is just product. So by subtracting the empty flask from the product and the flask, we get just the product. Okay, 
So that is our actual yield. So our actual yield is what we get when we do the reaction. So now percent yield, we're going to compare the actual yield to the theoretical yield. And you need this formula here, actual over theoretical times 100. And we want to make sure when we put this in our calculator, we use parentheses here. Okay, so our actual yield was 7.35 grams over what we expected to get, which was 8.22. I'm going to go ahead and put that in parentheses. And then we're going to multiply that by 100. So I get an answer of 89.4%. So what is this number telling us? Well, we expected to get 8.22 grams, and we got 7.35 grams. Okay, so we got an 89.4%. So if you were taking a test, would you be happy with an 89.4% on that test? You could have gotten 100, but you got 89.4. Is that still acceptable? Well, it depends on what you're reacting, but that percent yield tells you a lot. So if you got a really low percent yield, you could go back and try to figure out what went wrong in the reaction. So can you have more than a 100% yield? Can you get more product than what you were expecting? Well, uh, the short answer here is yes. Okay, kind of. So if I were doing a reaction and I ended up with more product than I was expecting, there can be a number of different things going on. So um, I could have, I could be massing. A uh, damp product. This happens often. So if you were supposed to completely dry it out and it was still containing um, moisture, that moisture would add mass to the product. You could have um, errors with equipment. So perhaps you made a mistake when you were measuring. Um, maybe your equipment is not calibrated correctly, um, and uh, you could also have contamination. So there could be something left over inside of the beaker that could be causing the mass to go over, but you're not actually getting more product than you should have. There's going to be something else in there, usually something foreign that is adding extra mass to there that's being um, calculated in, or you made a mistake when you did the lab. So if you get over 100% yield, you, you probably messed up. All right. So as you can see, percent yield is a very useful tool in chemistry because it tells us a lot about how our experiment, how our reaction turned out, and we can use that to write conclusions. We can analyze what happened and go from there. So that is percent yield.